It's been a few weeks since the gold price has breached $2,000 an ounce, but it's since come back down. We're talking about the trading rates that we're seeing now and future price projections with Gary Wagner, editor of thegoldforecast.com. Welcome back to the show, Gary. Thanks so much for having me. We spoke last time, uh, you and I, and uh, when we spoke a few weeks ago, I think gold was just at the precipice of breaking its uh, last all-time high. And... Um, you know, we were talking about whether or not the momentum could be sustained, and you had given your forecast back then, your call for a little bit of a pullback, but I think overall you were still rather bear, uh, bullish. Now, uh, bearish sentiment actually prevailed following that conversation because now we're trading back down towards the $1,900 an ounce level. We're higher than $1,900 an ounce, but I'm just kidding. I just want to get your take on whether or not this momentum could be sustained or whether or not you think we're back to the same old trading range that we've seen for about 18 months prior to this bull run. Well, I, I, the one thing I will say is it is a unique scenario right now. We came $10 shy of the all-time record high at 2,088. We went to 78. But what I found most fascinating was the size of the rally. The rally began, what, the end of January, Gold was trading at 1778, traded to 2078. A $300 rally, we can, we can all say, is a very substantial rally. Typically, a good rally is what, 100, 150, maybe $200? So to, to have almost a linear move, $300, is impressive. With that in mind, when we look at the move from those highs down to uh, 1892, it turns out to be the 61.8% retracement, which is a key Fibonacci number. It's an acceptable correction, but a deep correction nonetheless. Beyond 78, and the count can be invalidated, but the point is we had a $300 rise, and it gave back a little bit over half of that. And so is it sustainable? I believe very possibly, but that's not what we're witnessing now. Because what we've seen for the last two weeks is a very tight range form again between the highs at 1964 and the lows at 1892. The other thing I'm noticing is that it is alternating candle color. Typically on a rally, you get the majority of candles being green on a correction majority being red. When you get that alternating candle color in a tight range, it tells you it's consolidating. My personal belief is it's forming a base, but that we'll have to see. Okay. Now, the $300 run-up that you, uh, you've mentioned, some economists have speculated that the geopolitical risk premium from the invasion of Ukraine is indeed $300. Um, take a look at this article that uh, my, my colleague at Keiko News, Anna Golubova, wrote today. Um, this was from an interview with a group of economists, the New Zealand banking group ANZ. Um, Actually, she didn't do the interview herself, but uh, uh, one of the strategists said this. And uh, he said that gold is consolidating after seeing its best quarter in about two years. Um, still, the precious metal will continue to experience high demand while the geopolitical uncertainty dominates the marketplace, said ANC senior commodity strategist Daniel Hines. Um, investors should be aware that the risk premium in gold has already reached $300. So what they're implying is that should tensions die down in Ukraine, it's possible that the geopolitical risk premium would be eroded away and gold will fall $300. Is that uh, something in the cards, Gary? I hope that it would be. I fear that it will not. And the reason I say that is even though they are negotiating, it's a very odd time because when Re Russia negotiates, they're still doing military action. They haven't had a ceasefire. They haven't had a truce. The other thing is there's a tremendous divide between the goals of Russia, which is complete surrender, demilitarizing their military, and possibly even overthrowing their government. Ukraine simply wants to be autonomous. And those two things are so far apart. How do you reach a compromise where both sides feel as though they've accomplished what they're looking for? Because they're so far apart, I find that I believe it will get worse before it gets better. And I hope I'm wrong. 
Well, what is it about $2,000 that makes it such a key psychological level? It's been twice now in the last two years that gold has breached $2,000 and failed to sustain that level um, for any long period of time. Typically, when you get a new a record high at that point, especially if it goes up either parabolically or very, very sharp in terms of the attack, it will retrace just as quickly. We saw that when gold hit 2020, mid-2011. Uh, we saw that when gold ran up 2008 to 2010. We saw it in August when it hit 2088. When you tend to hit those new highs, the market tends to correct fairly quickly from that point. The mm -hmm. key is, is it going to have a, a higher low on the way down and then move to a higher high? And because the move was so large, we still have a much higher low. The question is, will it challenge that price point again? You know, Gary, gold has been moving up before Russian uh, forces invaded Ukraine. Remember that the uptrend was already there. The invasion just exacerbated the move. Now, some exactly. people like yourself have said that it's because of higher inflation expectations. So since gold has come down, what do you think the gold price is telling us now about inflation expectations? I think they're beginning to factor in a much more aggressive uh, Federal Reserve. They've already come out and said that they're at each of the six FOMC meetings this year, they will end it by initiating and implementing a rate hike. Initially, it was projected to be only a quarter percent. Now there is a higher probability that we could get one or two of those hikes at a half a percent. But here's my point. Even if you have as many rate hikes as they're planning and they take Fed funds rate to two and a half or three percent, if in fact, the CPI is going to be at 9.1%. What level of interest rates do you have to have to bring it down? I don't think it's going to have a large effect. The second thing is the unique circumstances, as you just mentioned, for this level of inflation. We were just getting over a recession that was caused by, by a series of events, a pandemic to a recession. We flooded the country with money. Globally, central banks flooded money to uh, give aid out, and now that brought on inflation, mostly because once everything subsided, the pent-up demand came out and there wasn't the product to give to the people. Those issues are still there. Now, if you add Russia and Ukraine to the equation, I believe Ukraine and Russia produced a large percentage of the imported agriculture, specifically wheat, to the European Union. Russia is a large exporter of gas and oil to parts of the European Union. So that will exacerbate what was already a tenuous situation. And that's the most worrisome part because you can't control inflation just by taking the demand down. And if they do that too quickly, of course, that could lead to a recession. To actually implement a soft landing with this scenario as it stands, I believe is exceedingly difficult, if at all possible. Okay. Well, let's go back to inflation for just a bit. Is gold typically a leading indicator or a lagging indicator of inflation? Which comes first? I have found it to be a, a lagging indicator that's not um, tick for tax, so to speak. In other words, if the dollar devalues so much and goods cost more, you'll see gold rise, but it will lag far behind that. The key is, is that when you look at it on a long-term basis, it still has approximately the same buying power that it did 100 years ago. In that period of 100 years, you can find all kinds of instances where it did not keep up with inflation. But as a whole, it does. And the analogy would be like the housing bubbles that we get, where it gets overpriced, they crash, they go up too high too fast, they come down too fast, and then they kind of end up in the middle. It's that balancing act. And that's how I think gold reacts in terms of it being a hedge against inflation. Okay. 
So what's your forecast now? Give us your uh, medium and uh, short-term outlook for the price of gold. Well, what I'm looking at, and I'm going to put a different chart on, on the street on the screen. And the interesting thing is this, and that is when you're trying to forecast a new possible high, as a market technician, we have no historical data to base it on. We know it's been as high as 2888 and 2078. Now, from what I'm doing, which is candlesticks, Elliott Wave, and Fibonacci extensions, it is the Fibonacci extension that is really the best tool I know to look at where it could go, especially with no technical data. And based on that, I believe by the end of the year, gold could reach between 2100 and 2300 per ounce. 2100 and $2,300 an ounce. Between uh, those two points. Okay, so you're calling for gold to hit new all-time highs. When Correct. exactly? Well, not exactly. I mean, no one knows exactly. Ballpark it for oh, uh, That's the hardest thing. I mean, extensions do not give timelines. Uh, Elliott Wave doesn't give an actual timeline cycle. And candlestick patterns simply show you pivots. I am saying by the end of the year, which isn't that far off, but I wouldn't be surprised if we got or challenged the record high now within two to three months. I don't think it'll happen overnight, barring something, no, a black swan event, something we're not expecting. Well, Gary, okay, so let's say it happens before the end of the year or even next year. Uh, it doesn't matter. Once it hits that level, what's next? Ah, According to the Elliott Wave count I'm using and the numbers on there that are big are intermediate. And we're at the conclusion of the fifth out of the fifth wave, which means after it hits that high, we will enter a protracted, possibly multi-year correction, just like we saw middle of 2011. We had from that till uh, the end of 2015, 2016, where it went from those high numbers and then oscillated between 1800 and 1500. When it broke through 1500, it didn't get to the low, which was 1020, till really the beginning of 2016. If in fact this, this count that I'm using has any validity, uh, people swear by Elliott Way, people think it's nonsense, but I found it to be very insightful. What it says, is that after we hit these all-time highs, we will, we will go into a multi-year correction or an extended correction. Yeah. And the reason I feel good about that is that means that things have become peaceful again. I'll welcome that, actually. But I'll certainly want to profit on the way up. Well, we don't have a lot of room to climb before we hit this multi-year correction. Um, I'm not challenging your forecast. I'm just saying, uh, I'm, I'm just putting things into perspective right now. It's, what, we're at 1940 today? Uh, 2100 uh, to 2300 yeah, is not... Is not that far. It's not that far. But it's still $350 away. The last rally was 300 I believe that based upon the fundamentals and how they unfold, in other words, if they can't get a handle on inflation globally because the EU has experienced a lot of it now, that's going to take gold higher at a quicker pace. And the crisis right now in Ukraine, if it's not resolved, that will add to the speed at which gold rises. But if we look at it right now, it's been trading sideways. So. I still believe that even a timetable of three months, six months, or the end of the year, in the big picture, is a fairly short period of time. Let's talk about, well, okay, so once gold corrects, like you've anticipated, um, following the uh, rise to 21 to $2,300, now you said earlier that gold is somewhat a lagging indicator for inflation. If gold does correct from new all-time highs, does that imply that by that point, inflation would have stabilized somewhat? We'll see inflation spike to a certain level. I don't know which level, 8%, 9%, and then come back down? It certainly could be. The only issue I have is if we're at 9%, that's the piece, the the CPI, PCE, which is what the Fed uses, is well above 6%. 
their target is 2%. So to get it to that level, it's got to be a multi-year process. And inflation, <laughs> I don't believe, will come down that quick. Oh, well, hold on. How committed do you think the Fed, I'm not saying this in jest, I'm just, I'm genuinely curious. How committed do you think they are to actually reaching that target by this point? I mean, if I tell I you, if I tell you, look, look, uh, if I tell you my personal, this is just a hypothetical, you know, example. If I tell you my personal budget uh, for, for clothes is, I don't know, $100 a month. I've already spent $500 a month. Okay, that's way above my $100 a month target. At this point, I'm saying to myself, what the heck, you know, what's another $400 this month? Or next month, let me just raise my target. You know what I mean? It, it's not, it, it's right. like I've, I've way surpassed my target. A at this point, what can I do to bring it back? Well, I'm not even motivated to do I'm just going to raise my budget. That's one way to look at it. But w to me, what's most important about what the Federal Reserve is doing is it's going to be an extremely difficult process to have what we call a soft landing take this high level and bring it down to an acceptable level without it causing a recession, without it really impacting the jobs that are being created. You can't slow the economy down and expect a landing that is anything but rocky at best. A soft landing is what they're shooting for. But when the inflation level is so high to get it to a number so much below that, I, I can't conceive of how they'll do that and do a soft landing, meaning, meaning not having a recession, not detrimentally affecting new jobs being formed, and not growing the GDP. H mm -hmm. How do you do all of those things at once? I don't see a way to do it. Right. So they are stuck between a, hard, a rock and a hard place. Um, yes. All right. Okay, so closing thoughts now, Gary, you, you, your, your sentiment for gold in the immediate term, we're still going to hover above this range, or do you see a correction to a floor before we climb back up to $2,100? What do you think is happening next? Well, I, I think that the last drop down, which was the 61.8% retracement of a much smaller rally from 1769 up to 2006, uh, we're going to go into yet another final two waves. So I see over time a very strong rally, a mild correction, and the resulting price above the record price. Okay, very good. Gary, thank you very much for your analysis today. We'll look forward to catching up with you soon. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. Take care. And thank you for watching Kitco News. I'm David Lynn. Stay tuned for more.